What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another Elite Code Challenge called NRA Tree Pre-Order Traversal. So given an NRA tree, return the pre-order traversal of its node's values. So for example, in 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6, what does the pre-order traversal do? Well, it first takes, uh, prints out the current node, so in this case it's 1, then it prints out the children. And before it prints out the children, it does the children of that node, okay? Oh, no, 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 my bad. Excuse me. It prints out the node, and it does its children. Okay, so that's how pre-order traversal works, okay? So, my fault. So, it does one, three, and it does the children of three, right? So, there's is five, and then six. Then, because it comes back up here, and it does the rest of the children of one. So, in this case, it would be two and four. So, that's why the pre-order traversal is one, 3, 5, 6, 2, and 4. So that's why the return of the order is 1, 3, 5, 6, 2, and 4. So our job is just to return a vector that has the pre-order traversal, and that's pretty much it. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to give you time to do it, and then there's two ways to do it. You could use iteration method, or you could use recursive method. I'll go over the recursive method first because it's easier to understand, and I'll do the iteration method later. Okay. All right, so how do we do this recursively? Well, first of all, first of all, we gotta do something. We gotta check if the root is null. Because if the root is null, then we're just returning an empty, uh, empty vector, an empty array, right? So here, I'll do a vector in to return. If the root is null, we'll just return to return. Okay, so return to return. Okay, so now otherwise we have to do a pre order traversal. And what we're going to do is we are going to pass in, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still a little sick. We are going to do call in pre order helper, which is a pre order traversal. What we're going to do is we're going to pass in the node, which is the current root that we're at. And then we're going to pass in the to return vector in order to add to it. So we're going to add add the values of the pre-order traversal into our vector and then we are going to after that we're going to return to return. So now now all our our main job ha we have to do now is just to basically implement this method called pre-order helper which is just going to essentially add the values of the root into a pre the pre-order traversal of the values of the root into our vector to return. Okay, so now I'm going to call a, create a create a helper method called void pre-order helper, and it's going to take in a node root, and uh, it's going to pass in by reference vector int. Uh, I don't know. Let's say to return whatever. And it's going to pass in by reference. Okay, so what exactly do we have to do now? Well, first of all, what we have to do is we have to add our current root that we are at into to return. Okay, so we're going to do to return in our helper method because we have to add the current, current node that we're at first. Remember, it's one. Three, five, six, two, four. So we got to do to return dot push back, and we're gonna push back roots value. Okay. So now we re now we added to returns uh, roots value. Okay. So now now our job is to go through the children of each of root. Okay. We're gonna go through everything every single children of of root and then we are going to add the values into to return so to do that we are going to go, go to this for uh, let's see what is the okay so it's a vector so we're going to do int i equals to zero i is less than uh, roots children dot size i plus plus that's going to go through all the ch uh, value the children of root which is three, two, four. In this case, it will be three, two, four. 
And what are we going to do? We are going to call pre-order traversal and pass in, essentially pass in, we're going to recursively call pre-order traversal and pass in our, the current, uh, every single child of root. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so then that'll, that'll recursively add those values in. So we're going to call pre-order helper root, uh, what my bad. Uh, let's see. It would be roots children at values of i, which is yeah. So every, we're gonna go through every single children of root, pass that in. We'll recursively call in our pre-order helper, and then after that, we are going to pass it in to return. So essentially, this is going to go through every single children and recursively pass in the values for every single children, and it's gonna do this thing again. Once more, it's going to add the nodes and add the, its children. It keeps going and going and going. After that, we're going to return to return. Actually, we don't have to return to return because it's uh, we're passing by reference, so to return would already get changed. Okay, so that's all we have to do in this case. After that, we're going to go down here, and yeah, that's that's pretty much how you do it. Because in this case, once we pass in pre-order helper. And pass in every child, uh, every of roots children. It's gonna come back up here, and it's gonna add whatever value that is. Go through its children again. Keep going until everything's null. So it's gonna do one. Go to the uh, the children of it, which is three. What is three's children? Five, six. It'll add three, five, six. After that, it goes to the. We'll come back here up here, and it will do the next chi child of one, which is two. And since two has no children, it'll do nothing. Then it goes to the next child of one, which is four. And then after that, it would return the pre-order traversal. So let's run this code and see what it does. Hold up. Shouldn't take this long. Okay, so it does it. One, three, five, six, two, four. One, three, five, six, two, four. Let's submit this. And it got accepted. So that's how you do this recursively. Basically, all you do is you go, you create a helper method, and you pass in the root. You add the root to your vector you're returning to, and then you go through its children and recursively call it based on the children of that. That's how you do it recursively. Now I'm going to show you guys how to use it iteratively. All right, guys, so how do you do this iteratively? Well, we got to think about how you would do this. So we're going to use a stack. First, what we're going to do, we're going to add the first root of our value, which is one, into our stack. And while our stack is not empty, we are going to pop the top part of our stack, the top, the top part of our value in our stack off of the array, uh, off of the stack. Okay? So we're going to pop this value one off of the stack, and we're going to add it to our array. So here I'm going to have an array one. Then we're going to look to its children which is one's children is four, two. We'll go backwards through one's children, which is four, two, three. And then we're gonna add it to the, our stack. The reason why we're going backwards is because if we go forwards, we're gonna end up going to four first, which is not what we wanna do. We wanna add the values backwards, so then when we pop, we add, we pop the values of three, which is the right order. So we're gonna go backwards and add four, then two, then three. Okay, so now all we add, so we added the children of one, which is four, two, or three. And this is, we're adding it backwards, four, two, three. Now what are we going to do? We're going to pop the first value of our stack, pop three out. So now three is now out of our stack and we add it to our array. Now we check, now we're going to recursively add the values of three's children backwards, which is six and five. So we're going to add six and then five. Now what we're going to do is we are going to pop our values off of the first top part of our stack, pop 5 out, and add it to our array. So here I'm going to pop 5 and add to our array. So here I'm going to add 5 to our array. Now all after we add 5 to our array, we are going to essentially go to its children. Well, 5 has no children, so we're done with that. Then we are going to pop the next value off of our stack, which is 6. Take 6 out of our stack, add it to our array. 
Then does six have any children? Six doesn't have any children, so we're done with that. Where we pop the next value off of our stack, which is two. The, what is two? Uh, yeah, if we add two to our array. Does two have any children? It doesn't have any children, so we're done with that. Then we need to add, we pop four off of our stack and add it to our array. Does four have any children? It doesn't have any children. We're done. Then we return our two array. So that's how you do, that's how this would work ideally inside our methods that we're going to do. So now, how do you code it? I'll code it right now with you guys. Let me just get rid of it. Let me just close the paint. Okay, so I first have our vector to return, and I'm returning to return. First, I'm going to do is check if root is null. Because if root is null, then we just return to return. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a value called cur. We're going to create a stack. Stack. It's going to be node, and it's going to have, it's going, we're going to call it cur stack, which is our stack that we're keeping track of the values that we're adding, pushing and popping. So what am I going to do? I'm going to push the first root into our stack. So I push the first root into our stack, and then I'm going to do while our stack is not empty. So cur stack is not empty. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the first top value, the top node, off of our stack. So we're going to do top node is going to equal to our current stack dot top. Then after that, I'm going to pop the value of our node off of our stack. And then I am going to essentially go through and I'm going to push the top value of our stack, top value, uh, the top value of our, the top, the top node, its value into our vector that we are returning. So to return dot push back. So we're going to add this to our vector that we're returning like how I showed you. And we're going to add its value. Okay? You guys understand what I'm doing so far? Now, now we have to uh, iteratively go through it, top node's children, and we're going to keep pushing it into the stack, but we're going to push it backwards, starting from 4, 2, and 3, in order to make sure that we don't get 3 to, uh, in order to make sure that it's going correctly. Because if we push four, if we push three, two, and four, and then we take out the top part of our stack, it'll go, f it'll go to four. It'll go through four's children first. So we're actually going to add backwards from our children of one. So we're going to push four, two, and three. So I'm going to do a four. I'm actually going to create an iterator that's going to go through backwards. This is going to be iterator is going to go from top node children uh, dot r begin which is a reverse iterator so it goes backwards then uh, ta iterator is less than iterator is not equal to top node children dot r end iterator we're going to pre-increment iterator okay uh, that's basically how you would do this we're how do you iterate it backwards and then we're going to push the values of each value of the children from backwards from four two and three into our stack and that's how you do it run the code and let's see what it does It does it correctly, 135624. Let's submit the value and 
let's see what it is. And it got accepted. So that's how you would do it iteratively using a stack. Rate, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from the video. I'll check you guys later. Peace.